Hello everybody, it is All Around Sports and I am your host Jay Jacinto. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to say thank you for the response on my last video. It really excites me and it makes me feel so mo motivated as a cre creator. Sorry, it's just, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the response to my last video and it's so motivating to me to see just how much you guys are enjoying that video after being gone for two months due to personal and reasons and school and just a whole lot of stuff, it really makes me feel good and it's got me motivated to make videos such as this one. So thank you guys so much. And with all that, let's get right into the video, which is I'm going to be doing an MLB playoff wild card prediction. So without further ado, let's get right into the wild card games. First series, we are going to do the Rangers versus the Rays. During the regular season, the Rangers went 4-2 and two versus the Rays. The Rangers swept the Rays at home, but the Rays won their home series 2-1. to one. The Rays did finish on a high note, winning four out of their last five games, scoring 44 runs in those games, while only giving up 24. Both teams have very little playoff experience except for a couple players. The Rays have a lot of pitchers with experience in the playoffs where their lineup has minimal experience. The Rangers have a lot of hitters with playoff experience while their pitchers have minimal experience. For example, the Rangers have Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon. That's all I can really think about in their batting lineup. Mitch Garver has playoff experience. Robbie Grossman has playoff experience. They do have a lot of veterans on their bench that do have playoff experience, but they also have rookies like Josh Young, Evan Carter, and youngsters like Leody Tavares, Nathaniel Lowe is an up-and-coming player that has never been in the playoffs before. You got Jonah Heim behind the dish, who's never been in the playoffs before. Adolis Garcia, who's never been in the playoffs before. And while they are great players, playoff experience is vital to have, and the Rangers don't have a lot of it. Now they do the Rays, and the players that do have experience haven't performed well, such as Zach Littell. Tyler Glass now has had his, his, his instances in the playoffs where he hasn't looked good. Aaron Savali hasn't looked the best. Taj Bradley has never pitched in the playoffs before. Their bullpen does look very solid with Colin Poche, Sean Armstrong, Robert Stevenson. Those players all look very solid, but it does make for a great series. Like I said, the Rays pitchers haven't had good experiences in the past, and I believe the Rangers lineup will outscore the Rays offense, and the Rangers will make it to the ALDS and will win this series in three games. Now moving on to the first NL wild card game, we're going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks versus the Milwaukee Brewers. And Milwaukee is built for a wild card series with three of the best stars in the league in Freddie Peralta, Corbin Burns, and of course Brandon Woodruff. But news today broke from Jeff Passan that Brandon Woodruff is not going to be starting in this series period. And he could potentially be missing the whole playoffs in its entirety, which would be a huge loss for Milwaukee as Brandon Woodruff has looked amazing since coming back from injury. And he is one of the best pitchers in the league whenever he is on the mound, in my opinion. So the Brewers are most likely going to be replacing him with Colin Ray. I presume it will be him. I don't know. They could go with Julio Tehran as an opener to get three to four innings. They've been using him a lot out of the bullpen, but I could see Julio Tehran. Colin Rea, maybe Adrian Hauser. They could go a lot of ways. In Milwaukee, they know how to make a pitcher good and where to put him in spots that he will perform the best. But Arizona, on the other hand, has two very good starters and a lot of pitchers that I think could go two to three innings and be solid, such as Ryan Nelson, Brandon Fatt, two youngsters who have been solid. But their two good starters are Zach Gallon, who I think is amazing. And Merrill Kelly, who has emerged as a consistently solid starter for the D-backs in his age 34 season. The D-backs lineup is very young and inexperienced, which will be tricky going up against the three-headed monster in Milwaukee. Of course, now it's only a two-headed monster in Peralta and Corbin Burns. But still two very solid starters and in a wild card series that is best of three. That could be all the Milwaukee Brewers need to make it out of this series. I believe the Brewers sweep the series against the Diamondbacks, and I believe they are a serious dark horse to make a run for the title if Brandon Woodruff comes back. Now, if he doesn't come back, I don't believe Milwaukee will make a deep run. But if Brandon Woodruff can be healthy this playoffs, after the wildcard series, of course, I believe Milwaukee could be a serious threat 
to the NL side of the playoffs. Moving to the second AL wild card series, we have the Toronto Blue Jays versus the Minnesota Twins, who are your AL Central champs this year. Barely even winning 80-something games. Didn't win that many games, but the AL Central is so weak. And I really do struggle to find an argument here for Minnesota because three of their good hitters going into the series are banged up. Carlos Correa was on the 10-day IL, Jorge Polanco was day-to-day, and Royce Lewis was on the 10-day IL. Without them, this lineup is not a playoff lineup, led by players like Trevor Larnick, Matt Walner, Max Kepler, Eduard Julian, Alex Kirloff. There isn't a whole lot of big name star players there that I think could elevate this lineup and replace the potential output that Royce Lewis, Carlos Correa, and Jorge Polanco would have. Carlos Correa will start this series. There is still question marks about Royce Lewis and Jorge Polanco, but I'm sure the Twins will rush them back into the lineup. And Minnesota truly got to the playoffs because of their pitching, and I believe they're going to stick with that for this series while their batters get back into their groove. The Twins and the Blue Jays split their regular season series 3-3. This series takes place in Minnesota, not too far from the Rogers Center, so sleep shouldn't be an issue. And I believe the Blue Jays pitching is going to shred through this Minnesota lineup. I think Gosman has a great series. I think Barrios will have an electric start. And this Blue Jay bullpen is elite. With guys like Jordan Hicks, Eric Swanson, and Jordan Romano to slam the door in the ninth, that bullpen is elite. The Blue Jays lineup is also very good, and I believe the young stars on this team like Bo Bichette, Flatty Jr., and Alejandro Kirk will make their names known. So, I think the Blue Jays sweep the Minnesota Twins and advance to the divisional round. For the final wildcard series, it takes us to the City of Love, where we have the Miami Marlins versus the Philadelphia Phillies, a wildcard matchup that puts the second and third place teams from the NL East against each other in the season series. Put Miami on top 7-6. to six. Your Game 1 starters for this series are going to be Jesus Lazardo and Zach Wheeler. As Zach Wheeler trying to prove why he, the Phillies paid him all that money. And Jesus Lazardo is trying to prove why the Marlins should pay him a ton of money. Jesus has a 3.65 ERA against the Phillies. But his worst start of the two he has made against the Phillies was at Citizens Bank Park. Where this series has taken place. Zach Wheeler has a 3 ERA against Miami, and all three of his starts against Miami this year were quality starts, which I think is a very important thing to say. Of course, you can't forget that Miami had Jorge Soler, and who can forget that run he went on with Atlanta when they won the World Series. If he can catch that fire again these playoffs, that will be a huge plus to this Marlins lineup, which has its hidden gems with players like Jesus Sanchez. You also have... Brian De La Cruz, Nick Fortes, Jazz Chisholm, of course, but he's not necessarily a hidden gem, but he's still a very solid player to have. One player not so hidden is Luis Arise, who got put in a huge spotlight this year after he was hitting over 400 for a majority of the year, but slowly faded off through the rest of the year. I truly believe the Phillies are going to win this series, however, and they can make a huge push for the playoffs mainly because the Phillies have the biggest, bigger star talent with Zach Wheeler, Bryce Harper, and of course Trey Turner. You also have a very solid player in Kyle Schwarber. But that has been it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. And also hit that bell to get notified every time I upload. Like I said earlier in the video, thank you guys so much for the response to my last video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And that is it, guys. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.